Join us for an hour of oversized trucking as we run alongside a variety of oversized rigs working around New Zealand. We'll visit some of the oversized giants of the trucking industry, including tri-drive stem trucks, off-road doubles and 6x6 stem haulers working in the huge central North Island forestry box. In fact, we'll have a bit of a look at the whole operation, stem, wood chip and have a look at the mighty D11R chip dozer in action at Mount Monganui. We'll see how a 100 ton transformer is prepped for road haulage on the Auckland wharfs and join a convoy carting balls into the South Island back blocks. We'll even get to see New Zealand's most famous truck, Concord, in action and listen to that big V12 Detroit wind up as she grinds over the Linders Pass. When loggers were cutting these monster kauri trees in the early 50s, truckers probably figured loads and trucks wouldn't get much bigger than this. But the maturing of the huge forestry resource of the central North Island, much of which was planted out during the depression years of the 30s in the Kayangaroa region, demanded serious muscle to cope with the cuts that were coming on stream during the 50s and 60s. Muscle like this Cummings equipped C501 Kenworth working for Mahanga Logging. There's 600 horsepower under that snout, and when you're dragging stems out of the bush, you need every one of them. The harvest in the Kaingaroa and surrounding forestry estates is around 5 million tonne a year at present. When you consider that every one of those logs is carried by truck, in fact it'll probably be handled by several trucks by the time it gets to its final destination, it's not hard to imagine the size of the trucking operation in the region. You'll find the biggest concentration of oversized rigs in New Zealand working in the Kaingaroa and in the central forest region. Combined, these estates encompass around 800,000 hectares of timber in the volcanic plateau country of the North Island. Kaingaroa is the land of the giants and the trucking gear is predominantly American or Canadian. This is heavy duty country and the gear has to be overbuilt and oversized to handle the pain in this game. Self-loader logging is typical of the type of operator in this country. Their Western Star Constellation 8x6 tri-drive is typical of this type of gear. About a dozen of these tri-drives work these forests and if you've ever wondered why they need that extra diff, you'd best ask the guy at the wheel. Self-loader logging driver Andy Broadley explains. We mainly need them for traction out of the uh, skids that we go into, particularly during winter and, and uh, even some summer periods. With all the mud and uh, all the pumice grounds out here, uh, at times we can be almost up to our hubs in, uh, in mud and we just need that extra axle for that drive, whereas the dolly vehicles can't even go into the places that uh, we go to sometimes, particularly in winter. This Constellation is a sister ship to Andy's rig and they're both specced with 14.6 litre Cat C15 power plants. There's usually a bit of a queue at the weigh bridge, especially when an off-road double is weighing up. 
such as this C501 Kenworth. These tri-drives and their trailers tear at about 20 ton and they're asked to cut up to 70 ton of stems. But it's not just the weight that makes these rigs oversize, it's their length, as those logs can get up to 35 metres long. And at times, the total length of these combinations can reach between 40 and 50 metres. truck may be the most glamorous piece of iron in the bush but it's totally dependent on the hard-working teams of bushmen to earn its living and every logging rig driver knows and acknowledges that the bush gang boys earn their pay the hard way. The ground in the central North Island is mostly volcanic in origin and it's not unusual for sinkholes to appear on the track and when it gets wet keeping traction can be a fight. Tri drives have proven their worth over several decades now and are a mainstay in the bush.
Everybody associates the Kayingara region with Pacific trucks, and you'll find the highest density of this legendary brand in the southern hemisphere in these forests. Most of them are getting long in the tooth now, but still put in the hard yards while in harness. No matter what breed is harnessed to these massive loads now, they all owe their livelihood to the Pacifics that the New Zealand Forest Service put to work in the mid-50s. They've built up a hell of a reputation in the bush and command intense loyalty. Charlie Hall of Tokoroa has been working in the bush for nearly four decades, since 1967 in fact, and he's a Pacific man through and through. Powered by a 600 cat with a 18 speed uh, road ranger behind it and 55,000 pound disc behind that again. Pulling two trailers, two trailers, a Bailey Bridge unit and a basically another Bailey Bridge trailer behind that. Uh, 10 axles and easy try and pull up between 90 and 100 tonnes where possible. to drive, comfortable, they can have all their modern gear. The other reason is if you bump anything with a new gear they fall in half, or bits fall off. If you bump into something with this, it won't fall off. This Pacific first went to work in 1988 for George Comer and is still doing the hard yards in the bush. But like we've said, most of the Pacifics in the region are getting elderly and are being replaced by a new generation of off-highway double tractors, such as this C501 Kenworth, operated by Shane Comer, George's son. Shane bought his father's business and his Pacific a couple of trucks back before he put his C501 to work.
Armed with 600 C16 cat horsepower, this Kenworth has a gross combination mass of 175 tonne. The combination tears at about 33 tonne, which means it can haul a payload of more than 140 tonne in theory. Usually Shane is hauling between 70 and 100 tonne loads, and occasionally he'll get up to nearer the 120 tonne payload mark, depending on the wood he's hauling on the day. Basically this rig can haul up to four times what an on-highway rig is allowed, and it takes a steady hand to muscle these off-highway doubles around the forests. Like many other drivers in the region, Shane is a second generation driver, and grew up around these logging giants. Once this lifestyle gets in your blood, it's hard to shake. He's usually running around 120 to 130 ton, and that takes a lot of stopping, but he's full of admiration for the anchors on this rig. The combination of the brake saver and the uh, engine brake is, is awesome, you know. Uh, it'll hold back 120, 130 ton, no trouble. So massive are the loads in this region that they have their own off-highway roading network. And the roads are designed to handle 15 ton axle loadings. There's around 180 kilometres of sealed roading in the off-highway network within and around the Kayangaroa region, and probably thousands more of kilometres of bush tracks and dirt roads. It's a permit-only region, and the public are not allowed to drive on these roads for obvious reasons. For that reason, you'll find that the majority of New Zealand's most stunning oversized rigs work their lives hidden from public view and lurking within these forests is some of the most impressive hardware you'll find anywhere in the world. If you hang around Kinleith long enough, especially around the gantry area, you'll see damn near every type of logging rig worthy of the name come through within the space of a few hours. While the big gun tri-drives and off-highway doubles undertake the heavy muscle work, there's an army of about 80 on-highway rigs doing much the same work but on a lesser scale, but who get to operate beyond the confines of the off-highway network.
eight mills are serviced by the off-highway network and a further 19 reside outside the network in this area. These rigs get to roam far and wide, hauling to mills scattered around the North Island, as well as to the ports, particularly to the Mount of Tauranga, the country's biggest log and wood chip destination. Logging is no different than any other business. You have to watch your costs. And while piggybacking might seem a time waster to those outside the industry, we all know it saves on running costs, rubber and taxes when you're on the highway. You're just throwing money away if you don't. Not all the logs are trucked out of the region. Here at Murupara, logs are brought to a railhead and will head to Mount Monganui on steel wheels rather than on rubber. But rail isn't much good without trucks backing it up. And all these logs arrived courtesy of the... A fair proportion of these trees in the region end up as wood chip and there's a huge fleet of chip liners at work dragging chip from mill to port. Hauling wood chip is a specialist job and those wood chip mountains that are such a feature of ports around the country arrive there by road in 30 ton bites and rigs much like this immaculate K104 Kenworth working for TD haulage of Mount Monganui. TD Haulage run an impeccable fleet of Detroit powered Kenworths and is one of a number of operators that have big fleets of dedicated chip liners feeding the ports 
and this eight-wheeler Kenworth is state-of-the-art. It'd be rude not to have a look at the biggest oversized rig of them all while we're here in Tauranga. The formidable D11R Cat Chip Dozer, working for Wood Exports and owned by Mike Lambert. It produces 935 gross horsepower from its 34.5 litre 3508 BV8 power plant. And this dozer will burn 100 litres of fuel per hour and will push around 750 tonne of chip in that time. That blade is 4.5 metres high and 8 metres wide. And in a good month, that cat will push around 85,000 tonne of chip. Operator Murray Smith knows he's probably got the best dozer job in the country. And he says the D11 effectively does the job of two D8s. One thing for sure, he's got the best view of anyone at the mount. From the top of his pile, Murray can see the steady stream of logging rigs pouring into the port every day of the week, night and day. This port's the biggest stockpiler and exporter of logs in the country, and it's a busy place. At the moment, this pile is around 53,000 ton, and in their best year to date, Wood Exports moved 420,000 ton at this port. The dusty back blocks of New Zealand's biggest high country station, Molesworth, is a world away from the volcanic plateau forests and the logging frenzy of the North Island, but it's still trucking country, only this time it's the cargo that's oversized.
Murray Transport regularly head in to service the station, and this trip they're bringing in bulls who'll get to romp with some of the 10,000 head of cattle that the 450,000 acre station runs. The trip into Tarndale Block from Red Gate is pretty straightforward, but the number of river crossings on the way in mean that the boys have dropped their trailers at Red Gate after unloading the first load of bulls. But even without trailers, the last crossing stops them. Molesworth station manager Jim Ward takes his 4x4 through, and even though the Amuri boys reckon they can probably get their trucks across, they decide to unload and not put their trucks at risk, as foreman driver Tom Parkey explains. Yeah, we've had trouble with, uh, with that Ford um, before, and uh, we're not going to wreck our trucks just for the sake of a couple of balls. In earlier days, the station used mainly ex-military vehicles, such as these RL Bedfords on station before the big gear of the modern era came on stream. Conditions in the high country can change rapidly in these mountains, and nothing is taken for granted. Even with the modern gear, the river crossings still have to be treated with respect, and a steady hand on the wheel and an experienced eye is necessary to cope with some of these backcountry tracks. Operated by Landcorp, who lease it off the Crown, it covers an area of around 85 kilometres square in the rugged Canterbury High Country north of Hanmer. The road linking Marlborough to Hanworth through the Molesworth is close to the public for most of the year, and that means good running for the Amuri boys. It's rare to encounter another vehicle on this tight, snaky road. 
Amuri is typical of many rural-based transport operations in the South Island. Their livestock drivers have to crawl into the back of beyond on a regular basis and take trucks into places that their designers probably would have preferred they didn't. But it's all part of the job for a stock driver in New Zealand. Up until just a few decades ago, stock was mustered and drove off the station by stockmen on horseback. The remnants of those days are still around, such as the stock bridge over the Acheron River. These days, their exodus is usually marked by long plumes of dust kicked up by stock rigs powering through this big lonely country. The Acheron Accommodation House was built in 1863 and was a welcome stock for the musterers in times past. But now it's just part of the scenery for the modern stockman. It's not lonely up in Auckland, however, and the heavy haul specialist multi-trains live in a different world to their trucking cousins down south. They specialise in moving nuggety loads that need specialist gear to shift. The truck files caught up with them while shifting what is a typical type of load for them, a 100 ton transformer which has to come off a ship and be transported to a power station. Even though the transformer they're about to shift is just a pup compared to some of the jobs they've worked on, the principle is the same no matter how heavy the load. It's the four P's. Paperwork, preparation, patience and perspiration. Dave Brown and Malcolm Templeton are partners in the business and their experience spans the glory days of the big shifts at Marsden Point and Motunui, where they helped move some of the biggest loads in this country's history. This transformer shift on a 24 axle line platform combination to Benmore Power Station in Otago was once bread and butter work for them during their time with Dales. They were pivotal figures in Dales heavy haulage before it moved out of the game in the 90s and have used that experience to set up their own business in recent years.
Their new 12-axle trailer is the first 24-metre platform of its type to hit New Zealand roads in over two decades, and it's capable of carrying 25-tonne payload per axle line. Each axle line has eight wheels, and all told is capable of carrying a 300-tonne payload over its 96 wheels. They had this trailer built with an exceptionally strong mainframe as they deal with a lot of high density loads, such as this transformer, which places a great strain on the chassis. The job of pulling this combination is left to one of the great trucks of its era, a 500 horse Mack Superliner, and the Multitrans Mack is rated to pull 200 tonne. Once loaded, multi-trans will head away into the night to reduce the chances of holding up traffic. But before they turn a wheel, there's been hours of work to get this oversized load ready to roll. Before they leave the wharf, a smaller load needed offloading. But when you've got oversized lifting gear of this size at the Auckland Wharf, nothing's a problem. While we're back in the North Island, we might as well have a look at the real logging giants of the bush down near Rotorua. This Terex 6x6 stem truck was put to work specifically for use on inferior logging tracks and is the largest of the 6x6 articulated earth movers adapted to this work in the country. The truck effectively rolls its own road and this rig can make its way over tracks that would stop any other truck. There's lots of clay and pumice in this region, and effectively a lot of areas can't be logged for five months during winter, and the theory is that these monsters can work all year round. Adapted from T-Rex's 6x6 TA dump truck series, these log haulers redefine the concept oversize in the bush, and big wheels mated with automatic transmissions and a tremendous ground clearance mean these rigs can work where others can't.
Powered by a Series 60 Detroit diesel rated at 400 horsepower, the Terex uses a ZF fully automatic transmission with manual override, which feeds planetary reduction axles. 400 horsepower may not seem much for a truck and trailer combination approaching 40 ton, but the torque converter in this automatic transmission gives these trucks amazing startability and heavy going. They're not fast, but they're steady. This Terex can pull an 80 ton load of stems out of the bush to the super skid site, and the all up combination weight can reach around 120 ton. Most of the braking is left to the Terex Retarder, which is powerful enough for the driver to hardly ever need to use his service brakes. And when you're working the type of country this oversized rig does, you want to have a fresh set of brakes as backup should the unexpected happen. While we're on the subject of 6x6 tractors, down in the South Island near Rangiora in Canterbury to be specific, Button Logging have a different take on the subject. They run a pair of heavy duty 6x6 Mack tractors that were originally used for mining work in Indonesia. The spec is ideal for the work in this region. It's tough logging country, full of soft going, steep tracks and dirty weather. This Mac runs a 400 horse Cummings, an Allison automatic transmission, heavy duty 56,000 pound Mac diffs and a chassis that looks like it came out of a locomotive. Everything about this truck is oversize. The combination of big rubber, automatic transmission and heavy duty spec means this truck takes a lot of abuse.
It's not the prettiest logger in the country, but it'll most likely be around a lot longer than everything else at work at present. Owner David Button said, we'll just keep on rebuilding them as they get older. They've got a good power plant, a massive chassis, strong diffs, and the transmission seems to be bulletproof. And not to mention those big wheels. They'll do us for a fair while. Another truck that's been around for a while now is Concorde, perhaps the most well-known truck in New Zealand. The W924 Kenworth has a 12V71 V12 Detroit under that long snout. And in its day, Concorde was the undisputed king rig in the country. Put on the road in 1973 by Mike Lambert as a logger and seen here under Lambert and Alf Quaife's colours, the truck has mainly worked around logs, but present owner George Wallace has given the elderly truck an easier life. George is a Detroit and international enthusiast and always wanted a V12 Detroit to complete his collection of Detroit powered Inters. But try as he did, V12 powered Inters are even rarer than V12 powered Kenworths and when Concorde came up for sale, he was glad to grab it. George had the Kenworth rigged out as a tip truck and is hauling fertiliser to George's farm on this run and also does construction work around Wanaka when needed and helps with his loose earn business during the season. The tipping deck can be whipped off to expose a fifth wheel and Concorde can then work as a tractor again so George has his options covered with the way he has Concorde set up.
bought this uh, this Kenworth because it had a V12 Detroit. I've always liked Detroit diesels, and uh, this was the biggest one and uh, really good. And I've never driven anything with such with such power. It, it, for 30 years old, it was over 400 horsepower, and um, today, well, every, everyone else has caught up, but it's taken 30 years to catch up. It's just terrific to drive. It you know just cruises along so well and uh, not so many gear changes, lots of power, very flexible motor, yeah. Well if you want to know why I bought the truck you just listen to that. The best way to turn diesel into noise. There's no other sound in the country like the sound of the 14 litre V12. And while most trucks of its age have long since slid into oblivion, it's great to see this slice of history is still working.